All right, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're going to do this equation right here, which involves inverse Laplace transforms, partial fraction expansion with complex roots, and it involves Euler's identity. Uh, some things you'll need to know just from the jump is uh, you'll need to know how to do a Laplace transform of e to the minus at. You'll need to know Euler's identity, uh, which is cosine omega t equals e to the j omega t plus e to the minus j omega t over 2, and um, sine is about the same thing, except you have this minus sine right here, and you have j2 on the bottom. And I think something we all know by now is the quadratic equation. So let's get started. Uh, first thing we need to do is um, we need to find the, the roots of this. We already know this root, and uh, so we need to find the roots of that. And how we do that is we have a little a there, we have a little b there, we have a little c. Plug in there, plus or minus the square root, b squared, which is 100, minus 4a times 169. And as you can see, this is going to be complex. All over 2. And uh, after evaluating this, we get um, uh, minus, oh, what is that? That's an S. Minus 5 plus or minus um, the square root of 469 minus 100, what's that? 576 over 2. And when we take the square root of that, we get 24 divided by 2. So our roots are plus or minus j, I'm sorry, there needs to be a minus there, j, 24 divided by 2 is 12. Okay, so these are our roots. We can rewrite our equation. So we will rewrite this equation, and I wrote it down here. And we'll just erase this portion and rewrite our roots. Remember, those are the zeros of our equation. So what we need to put in is S plus 5 minus J12. And then also S plus 5 plus J12. All right. And now set this up just as we would a normal partial fraction expansion. We have a B. We put and we put this portion under it. And then we have a B conjugate because this is if you notice this is the conjugate of this. B conjugate over S plus 5 plus J12. I know that's very small, but then whatever. And, uh, and then we plug in, we set our S to something, and we, we, find, um, what, we find out what each one of these are. And basically it makes it a little easier for us because whatever we find this to be, uh, this is just the uh, opposite, or the conjugate of it. So I will, you can multiply this whole equation over. What you get is 10s squared plus 119 equals a s plus 5 minus j12 s plus 5 plus j12. And plus b which will be s plus 5 and s plus 5 plus j12 and then our next one b plus let me scroll down here plus b conjugate s plus 5 s plus 5 minus j12 
So let's evaluate if this equation, if I let s equal negative 5, notice that this will go to 0, this term will go to 0, uh, this portion will go to 0, this portion will go to 0, and it's going to be 25. So what I'm left with is 10, 25 plus 119 equals a minus j 12 j12. You multiply two complex uh, numbers, you get a negative 1, but then you have the negative, so they cancel out. What you end up with is 10, 144 equals A times 144, and these two terms cancel, and A equals 10. Okay, so our next one we're going to pick a complex number to plug in, and we let s equal negative 5 plus j 12, and what we end up doing is that sets, that's going to set this to 0. So what we get is we get 10 uh, squared this term minus 5 plus j 12 squared plus 119 equals b j 12 times j 12. Okay, uh, square this. When you square this, you get 10. Square the first term is 25. Two times, two times these two terms combined. Oh, that's going to be a negative. Two, that's going to be negative. 10, 120 j, and then square this term. You square that, you're going to get a minus 144. And then we have this plus 119 plus 119. Okay, equals. When you combine these, you get a negative, get a negative, 144b. Okay, and a little bit of, notice that these all cancel out. We're left with negative 100, uh, 1200j equals negative 144b. This drops out, this drops out. We get J one two zero zero one four four equals B. What you end up with is then B equals J one twenty five over six. So what that means is uh sorry, that's B conjugate. So what that means is B equals J minus, because the conjugate, these two are conjugates about each other, 26. Okay, so now we have our variables, our constant terms for our partial fraction expansion, and then we can just take the inversal plus of those terms. So. We'll rewrite our equation here and we get an extra page. We have A, which is we need the inverse of the plus of ten over S plus five. Right up the back, I think we know that one. Plus the inverse of the plus of J twenty five over six s plus 5 minus j12 plus the inverse Laplace of minus j25 over 6 s plus 5 plus j12 
comes a little bit up in the tricky work. Um, we'll just take the inverse plus of this real quick is uh, minus 5 um, t. Then drop this down. This is just the constant term here. I know it has a j in it, but we could just think of that as a constant. And if we think of that as a constant, what we're left with is uh, we pull that out. We're left with just the constant over an s term. Notice that this is just the constant here over <coughs> an s term. So if you could think of it that way, with I know the complex numbers do make it a little complex, but this is s, and here would be your would be your a term. Okay, so let's let's go about it that way. Uh, we have plus j25 over 6, and then if I take the inverse of plus of that, I'm going to get e to the minus 5 minus j12t, and the next term is, I have the minus there, I'm just going to pull that minus out, minus j25 over 6, and the inverse the plus of this portion here, remember, we have our s term and we have our, that's basically our a, e to the minus 5 plus j12, let me put that in brackets, t, okay, switch up colors here, it's getting a little crazy. All right, so now this goes back to when we needed a, we needed to know Euler's identity. Um, we could leave it like this, but it's, it doesn't look nice at all. So we'll rewrite this term negative five t, uh, and we'll factor out we'll factor out all the terms that we can basically factor out of here out of this out of this box. We can factor out this. We can. And notice that if we multiply right here, multiply this out, what we really have here is minus 5, and then we have an e to the j12. You see that? When you multiply two numbers, uh, uh, two variables, and they have the uh, exponents, you just add them, which is right here. So we're just undoing that process. And same thing here, minus 5 t, because that t goes back in here, e to the minus j 12 t. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this and this, leave the rest in there. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to factor out that as well. So plus j 25 over 6 e to the minus 5 t Okay, multiplied by, now whatever's left in there, whatever's left in, which is going to be this, this, and this, e to the j12t minus e to the minus j12t. Now, in order to use Euler's identity for this, um, Let's go look at it. Let's go look at Euler's identity and see what it says. So uh, we have a minus down there. This has a plus and a two. So let's we have this minus. So we're going to we end up making it a sign, but we need a J two on the bottom. And the J two is going to come by multiplying top and bottom by J two. So if I multiply this whole equation by multiply the whole equation by j2 over j2 um, not the whole equation, not the entire equation, just this portion here, just this multiplication portion we get 10 e minus 5 t plus j squared 50 over 6 e to the j squared, I said, j squared 50 e to the negative 5t 
Now what we're left with in this bracket here is e to the j 1 2 t minus e to the minus j 12 t all over j 2 and lo and behold we can convert this to sine so 10 e to the minus 5 t plus notice when you when you square a complex term you get a positive I mean, you get a negative, you get a negative, so that turn, positive turns into a negative. 50 over 6 is equivalent to 25 over 3, e to the minus 5t. And this portion here on the inside turns into sine. And that's basically it. Um, you can multiply by your u of t uh, because now we're in the time domain. Uh, we came out of the frequency domain into the time domain. And um, if you wanted to convert this sine into a cosine, you would simply subtract 90 degrees from the phase angle because right now the phase angle, which is right here, is zero, which might be a little bit out of the scope of this video, but if we did, your cosine term would look like this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, remember, subscribe, like, comment, uh, critique me. Uh, appreciate it. Take care.